I didn't know what feelings were, I didn't embrace them, I stuffed them down with food. <gasps> All I did with my feelings was this. Go away, go away. I don't want you. Therapy helped me unearth those and I stopped coding all of my pain in eating and destructive behaviors. Hello my favorite people, welcome back. Every single time I upload a video, I basically update you on just life overall, but also my relationship with food, my body, and well, recovery. But I'm so excited to do this video because I get to talk about all of that stuff, but also answer a lot of your questions about things you want to know about me or life or other stuff in general. I'm not saying that I'm the most interesting person. I just love being able to share my struggles and my story so that you and I can relate and all of us in the planet feel less alone, you know? So I am going to answer your questions. Okay, let's go. First question. Do you believe in full recovery or just always living with an eating disorder? I of course believe in really anything in terms of every person is so different and if you claim to have succeeded in full recovery that's totally awesome good for you but for me as a person I've been struggling with body and food issues ever since I can remember being conscious of eating and looking in a mirror so probably since I was the age of five I had anorexia at the age of 10 never diagnosed just as I'm reflecting back on my past and then a lifetime of binge eating disorder just constantly eating and feeling like garbage about myself and hating myself and doing it every single day my whole life until I was 20 one, I realized I had binge eating disorder and then I started engaging in bulimia and exercise addiction and counting all my food and being obsessed with measuring everything, everything to the gram and tracking everything. And it's not just an eating disorder, it's really a relationship with your emotions and how did I deal with my emotions as a child? I didn't know how to and I turned to food. So it's so much bigger than that to me. So if you're looking at recovery for an eating disorder as something you just conquer, I just don't really believe in that for myself. All I want to do every day when I wake up is, will my actions today help me further enhance my relationship with food and my body? And how can I also have a self-loving mindset, a more mindful way of thinking about myself and my life and my confidence levels, all of that, how can I encourage myself more? I kind of feel like I'm always gonna be on that path, but everyone's different and I have faith though in always being successful in choosing recovery every day. I think it's choosing to love myself and be kind to myself more every single day. How do you deal with bloating and feeling over full? What do you do? There's nothing wrong with eating a lot of food. There's nothing wrong with bloating. There's nothing wrong with having a big full belly after you eat. Even if you have binged on something, do you really think that it will make you feel any better to start beating yourself up? Do you really think that you're gonna feel relief for forcing yourself to then starve tomorrow? Do you really think that sitting there and being like, oh my God, what did I do, what did I do, what did I do? Is that gonna make you feel any better? No, it's gonna make it worse. And honestly, I would turn to more food for comfort every time that I felt bad for eating a lot, enjoying a lot of food, even a binge, I would binge more for feeling bad about binge eating. And it's just that recognition of that mental struggle, that mental cycle that we keep doing to ourselves. That is so important to realize and you then notice how much more you need to be compassionate because imagine if you did this, if you ate a huge delicious meal and yeah, you're sitting there, your stomach's out to here and you're feeling really uncomfortable in many ways, mentally, physically, emotionally. You start beating yourself up about it and then you try to do something to really like make it go away or start just trashing yourself. What's gonna happen? Seriously, think about it. What are you gonna do? You're probably gonna say, I'm gonna starve myself tomorrow. You're probably gonna say, I need to get rid of this and you're gonna hurt yourself. Or you're gonna probably turn to more food. Basically any result that I didn't name, it's not gonna be a healthy one. What I've learned in terms of recovery is you really have to just feel things more and realize things more and be more aware. Don't numb out. Don't numb out your thoughts and feelings and just think about what you can do to change your body or change your eating and being mean to yourself about all those things. You really gotta step back and that's what's really scary and really sucks and none of us have ever wanted to do. That's why eating disorders are what we choose. It makes so much sense that we choose a struggling disorder that we don't want to have, but it keeps us focused and fixated on something to do all the time and it helps us punish ourselves to try to motivate ourselves. It's fascinating. Next question, when was your first kiss? Okay, this story, the juicy part isn't gonna be the story of my first kiss. The juicy part of the story is gonna be my first heartbreak. 
how do we start this? Well, my first kiss happened when I was 16. But the most interesting part of my first relationship is how it imploded. Actually, no, it was destroyed by him. Now in high school, I was a very, very shy teenager. I was a very sheltered and going to an all Asian grade school. I was very exposed to different varieties of people and ethnic backgrounds thanks to my amazing Americanized parents. But when I went to high school, I was like, oh my God, what the heck? So I really didn't have that many friends. I struggled a lot to socialize, but it ended up really, really finding a bonding connection with this other boy. Let's call him Ken. It's pretty close to his name. He was very shy. He was a skater boy. He was really into punk rock pop music. So he introduced me to bands like Forever the Sickest Kids, All Time Low, Metro Station, sharing little earbuds like, oh, you get the left one, oh, you get the right one. And there was one song that was called Kelsey. I fell in love the minute he played that for me because Kelly, Kelsey, and it goes, whoa, Kelsey, I see me how she feels. The ocean feels. First off, isn't it so insane to think about how deeply in love you were with your first boyfriend or girlfriend? Like you really, really thought you were gonna marry this person. I also did not realize that there was something else going on with him and another. <gasps> this girl, let's call her Kara. <laughs> she was a year younger and they started being friends and hanging out and talking a lot. And I was kind of like, going on. Me being very trusting, I didn't really think anything of it. Turns out that the entire high school knew that there was something going on with them. Except me. Even my friends or people who d weren't my friends because I didn't really have that many friends. Everyone knew. And I don't even remember if I confronted him about it. I'm pretty sure I did bring it up to him a few times. Totally denied it. He just started ignoring me. Blatantly ignoring me. Not picking up my calls. Not responding to my texts. And eventually, in school, in person, in high school, he really pretended that he didn't know me. It was like he erased me from his memory. He also started telling people I cheated on him. How could I be cheating on you when I'm calling you and wondering why we're not talking? So everyone in my high school thought I was such a terrible person for the next three years, okay? That makes me feel like <laughs> definitely traumatized me for my next many, many relationships. So thank you, Ken. Do you have any advice for how to love your body as is without wishing to change it. I do love my body and I try to love my body more every day, but we're literally taught every day in magazines, on TV, from people around us, our friends, our family. Everyone's always saying, oh, I wish I could be like this or I don't look good or this is a bad picture of me. If only I could lose a few. It's not your fault for wishing that it was different. And that's kind of the advice that I try to give to myself every day is thinking, okay, I I know why you're thinking that. It almost feels like a brainwashing that you can wash away. It is possible to love your body without wanting to change it. It also is possible to want to change your body while still loving it. And I don't ever want you to feel like you need to change or you shouldn't change. It's just, are you able to remember how important your relationship is with your body overall? and with food and all things around it and then still change? Is that possible? If not, work on the relationship with all those things first. What ethnicity are you? Okay, I have a good story. My mom loves telling this to everyone. So when I was about three years old, I probably didn't have a brain then because I asked her this. My mom was changing my clothes and she goes, you know, Kelly, you are half Chinese and half Japanese. And I looked at her and went, which half? <laughs> pointing at my body. And I just love that story because it just shows how incredibly intelligent I still am not. If you could change something from your past, what would it be? Or would you change anything? The only thing I really would have changed is maybe going to therapy earlier. I love therapy. Therapy saved my life. I started going when I hit rock bottom though. And I think that if I had started going at the age of 10 when I was anorexic, but none of us knew about it, none of us knew what anorexia was. Everyone thought I was just wanting to be skinny and not eating. I think that would have saved me 12 more years of struggle. My binge eating disorder lasted from 10 to 22 and I still kind of struggle with that now. I'm not fully recovered, I'm not fully cured, but I think that if I had gone to therapy as a young person, I wouldn't have hated my body and struggled so much with food and binge eating for so many years. That would have been cool. 
Therapy isn't a place to fix yourself. Therapy is simply a place that helps you get to know yourself and learn about your struggles and the way that you view yourself. It just helps you get in tune with feelings. I didn't know what feelings were. I didn't embrace them. I stuffed them down with food. All I did with my feelings was this. Go away, go away. I don't want you. Therapy helped me unearth those and I stopped coding all of my pain in eating and destructive behaviors. Yeah, I'd probably change that. This is probably my favorite question. What do you do when you feel guilty after eating? I really struggle with letting myself be full still. And so lately what I've been doing is if you fill your belly with yummy, yummy food and you're afraid of looking like you're full or having a belly, I suck in all the time. Not knowing, not intentionally, I don't want to be sucking in, but because I was always really self-conscious of my tummy when I was younger because I was a chubby kid and I was made fun of that I learned to suck in constantly. constantly. And that's not good for your digestive system. That's not good for your stomach. That's not good for your bowels. So what I've been doing in just the last week, to be honest with you, committing to not sucking in, committing to taking five to 10 deep breaths at a time. It sounds like it's not a big deal, but for someone who's so irrationally afraid of their belly being big, that has saved me a lot in terms of practice to hopefully not feel guilty after eating. It's really important and it's helped me a lot in terms of like stomach pain and just mental guilt about being full because there's nothing wrong with being full or bloated. Next question. Did you ever struggle with any type of purging after a binge? I don't want to trigger anyone, but I think this is something a lot of people don't talk about. You know, a lot of people talk about, oh, I eat too much or I starve myself a lot, but the less attractive and kind of like scary things to talk about are when you eliminate your food through purging. And that is something I did. And it's really hard to talk about for many people because it feels like such a scary thing to do. It's very common, unfortunately. When I was purging, it was because I was restricting a lot and I only started doing it Honestly, when I did this pageant when, a few years ago in Chicago, I, I became hyper obsessed with the way my body looked, obviously because I had to be in a swimsuit and be in a dress and be on stage with all these tall, thinner women than me. I'm very short, I'm 4'11", so in order for me to become that standard of beauty that I don't believe in now, but I became a victim too. I thought I had to be really thin, so I did do that. And what I remember the most was that it really just became a game for me, just like when it came to having anorexia when I was 10. It was a game to see how long I could last without food. It's not a fun game. I'm not saying it's a fun game, but that's what I did. So when this pageant came around, I didn't realize that I felt all that pressure, but I would restrict a lot. And then at night I would be really, really hungry. So I would just eat and eat and eat and eat. And I, unfortunately, I did have a friend who had a lifetime of bulimia and she told me about some of her behaviors and I started trying them but when I would do it my whole face would blow up it my eyes were out to here my skin had all these red specks on it and I was just so bloated looking in my face and it hurt so badly so I just want to bring it up and talk about it not to trigger you and not to encourage you I just want to make you feel less alone and not feel ashamed if you've done it or if you're gonna do it it's just not worth it because once I started doing it it kept going and going and going and I saw myself spiraling and it didn't help at all. I was still hungry and struggling even more and then I was in pain. It's just not worth starting another struggling relationship with food or your body because you are gonna have to undo it and find a way out of it and you don't deserve that. I hope you guys really liked me answering all of your questions. If you have any more, I'm really, really active on Instagram. This channel is super important to me. You guys can always rewatch my videos because I want this YouTube channel to be a resource for you. I have tons of videos on binge eating disorder, anorexia, food guilt, food fears, overcoming anxiety, depression, all that stuff, and just fun vlogs where you get to see me with my family, with my friends, eating, cooking, whatever. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and if it helped at all, drop a comment. If you have any to say I love hearing from you always please subscribe if you want to see any other videos from me push the notification bell button so you always know when I upload another one and I will see you in the next video bye